If you want to know just how stupid and evil and insane the people who control the communications superhighways really are, just look at their hate speech policies. Or, more importantly, look at how they apply their hate speech policies, because this is going to give you a glimpse into their twisted minds and their twisted souls. The YouTube Trust and Safety Team currently understands the rules of the platform as follows. Muslims are a protected group. Christians, atheists, and ex-Muslims are not. Since Muslims are a protected group, anything that could potentially offend them is hate speech. Christians, atheists, and ex-Muslims are not protected groups, and therefore Muslims can say whatever they want about them. Muslims are even free to threaten them with death. I kid you not. Let's begin with a now famous clip of Ali Dawa telling ex-Muslims that once Muslims rise to power, ex-Muslims will be exterminated. This is a part of our religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a capital punishment, because people like you, little weaklings who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt. And we're proud of that. Yeah. Capital punish will be applied in an Islamic state. Yeah. Not individuals going and doing it themselves like uh, idiots. Yeah. No. Under an emir, it is done. Yes. And we, you know what, we'll be watching. Now, for the record, I don't want Ali Dawa banned for saying things like this. I think it's great that he's admitting that Muhammad ordered his followers to execute anyone who leaves Islam. But we can't ignore the hypocrisy here. If someone posted a video on YouTube saying, once my political party rises to power in such and such country, we're going to gather all Muslims together and execute them. How long would that video be on YouTube? Not too long ago, the apostate prophet was tweeting about how YouTube allows Ali Dawa to promote the death penalty for apostates on its platform. YouTube then sent AP a message asking him for the video. The YouTube Trust and Safety Team eventually explained their decision to allow Ali Dawa to continue promoting the death penalty for apostates. Update. After carefully reviewing the video, our team has confirmed that it doesn't violate our community guidelines, and therefore, we will not be enforcing any actions on it. We encourage users to share their opinions on a wide range of different topics, but there's a line between passionate debate and malicious harassment. We understand the value of free expression and take great care when we enforce our policies. We'll take down content that diverts into threats or harassment when flagged, but not all negative videos or comments will be removed. Hope this helps clarify. Oh, it helps clarify, all right. So, if a Muslim says, we're going to keep converting people to Islam until we establish an Islamic society, and once we establish our Islamic society, all of you ex-Muslims are going to be executed, that's simply passionate debate, and free expression, according to the YouTube Trust and Safety Team. Since YouTube won't ban Muslims for calling for the public executions of apostates, let's see what YouTube will ban people for doing. In my video, Top 10 Quran Verses for Understanding ISIS, all I did was list the Quran verses that ISIS used to justify the things they were doing. According to YouTube, my video was hate speech, even though the only group I talked about in the video was ISIS. Apparently, even ISIS jihadis qualify as a protected group. So, whatever happens, we'll keep moving forward. Never forget that the people who wield power on these platforms are a bunch of sniveling losers and wannabe tyrants who don't have enough life experience to know how pathetic they are. We're smarter than them, we're better than them, and we're more relentless than them. And that means they will eventually lose. Because that's what losers do.